Go home, watch the kids. Just watch the kids. What they're doing. We've got to be molded. The spirit illumines our, uh, our darkness, informs our ignorance, and helps us in our manifold necessities. But the mind must be constantly going out after God. If worldliness is allowed to come in, if we have no desire to pray, no desire to commune with him, who is the source of our strength and wisdom, the spirit will not abide with us. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I don't know if you got that. Lately, I've been praying some deep prayers. I said, Lord, help me to cast down every idol. Oh, oh, oh don't, don't, don't kid yourself, saints. We all got them. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't watch worldly, but what about pride? What about attitudes? I've heard, I've heard some people say that, you know, some of the media's focus in, you know, the president or these churches and all, uh, you know, that, that makes me feel so bad. I'm like, wow, why are we so mean? Because the spirit of the Lord is not abiding in us. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's not going to be hatred and malice and envy and evil speaking. Oh, oh this is the church with straight testimony, right? We believe in getting it straight. See, I remember when I was little, my mom used to give me them, them nasty little aspirins and put a little orange juice in just to make it, to kill. No, I'm giving you the straight. No, 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 no nothing. You, you got to get it straight. But here it says, no renewed heart can be kept in a condition of sweetness without the daily application of the salt of the word. Divine grace must be received daily or no man will stay converted You could be converted, but you have to stay converted. Yes. You, you, it, it's, it's, a, it's a daily thing. It's an hourly thing. Let your faith be substantiated by the word of God. Grasp firmly the living testimony of truth. Have faith in Christ as a personal savior. Not the savior of your, of your mama, your daddy, or your generational legacy. He must be personal. What is that? What the old folks say? You, you have to stand there. Every tub going to have to stand on his what? In his bottom. When you stand before that, the most, the, the God of heaven on that journey is, oh, well, uh, uh, let me get my pastor. No, you better know Jesus for yourself. Amen. Christians should be preparing for what is soon to break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. And this preparation they should make by diligently studying the word of God. And striving to conform their lives to its precepts. I'm not even going to lie to you. We're in a lazy generation now. We just, you could just get a sermon on YouTube. You don't have to study the word of God. No. Did, did you said amen, sister? Come on. Hit it one more time. <laughs> we are in a generation where we are encouraged to let someone else study for us. I used to read my Bible so much. Now it's like, oh, it's, it's easy to get caught up in YouTube religion. Yes. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Am I the only one in the house? No. Come on now. Come on now. But none but those who have fortified the mind with the truths of the Bible will stand through the last great conflict. Amen. You have to fortify, eat, digest. Let your soul be nourished by the word. He says, by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. How do you think Jesus was able to stay sin free for 33 and a half years? Oh, I don't know how Jesus did that. Because he stayed close to the father. He would pray all night with strong tears and crying. He spent much time in prayer. Only those who have been diligent students of the scriptures and who have received the love of the truth will be shielded from the powerful delusions that take the world captive. Mm, 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 mm. Diligent. That's what this church used to be known for. The uh, people of the what? The book. Not Facebook. But the holy book. Our people need to understand the oracles of God. They need to have a systematic 
knowledge of the principles of revealed truth, which will fit them for what is coming upon the earth and prevent them from being carried about by every wind of doctrine. It's, I love this church. It's, even though I'm not a member here, but I watch it online, and I just I love what, what, what's being promoted here. But you know what? The enemy says, keep going to state line. Just don't know Jesus. Do you know there's going to be a lot of people who, present truth, are not going to make it? Oh, man, that's a hard statement. Because the enemy will deceive people to say, oh, I'm not like nominal Christians, but I'm in the present truth. But the Jesus behind that truth ain't in them. Lord, Lord, didn't I do all that? Didn't I watch? Didn't I watch the Sunday, the Sunday law update every week? I taught Sabbath school. I was an elder. I was a deacon. I was there seven days a week. And the Lord said, "I'm sorry, son. I don't know you. Sir, I don't know you." Several times each day, precious golden moments should be consecrated to prayer and the studies of the scriptures if it is only to commit a text of memory that spiritual life may exist in the soul. What are we doing in our spare time? I'm going to be honest with you. I, I could do way better. Maybe y'all better than me. But I've, I've made a, a, a commitment to the Lord. I said, Lord, this is, it's time. It's high time. High time. God's precious word is the standard for youth, all right, youth, who would be loyal to the king of heaven. Let them study the scriptures. Let them commit text after text to memory and acquire a knowledge of what the Lord has said. But guess what? What are they seeing at home once again? Are they seeing mama and daddy studying the scriptures? Fathers, priests, leaders in the home. Do they see you leading out in worship? People online, you, are, are we doing that? Because she says in, I think it's Adventist Home, she says that children are taught to hate God and religion because of what goes on at the dinner table. Girl, did you hear about brother? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you heard what the pastor did? And they hear that. And they're like, you better respect your elders like, mama, you don't. You just told, you just told our brother so-and-so the other day, I heard you gossiping on the phone to so-and-so and so-and-so. So don't be mad at the children if you're not modeling for them. Build a wall of scripture around you and you will see that the world cannot break it down. Commit the scripture to memory and then throw right back upon Satan when he comes with his temptations. It is written. This is the way our Lord met the temptations of Satan and he resisted them. But if we don't have anything in us, we have nothing to give back. All we got is, you know, foolishness. Hang in memories, hall the precious words of Christ. They are to be the value far above gold or silver, silver or gold. Mercy. Like I said, I'm like, Lord, what do I need to cast down? What am I doing in my idle time that is not honoring you? What am I doing that I could be learning scriptures and I could be filling the, the halls of my mind with the precious truths? Because I want to live like Jesus lived. I am far from the mark, but I'm pressing toward the mark. Yes. And ye shall be brought before governors, kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Matthew 10, 18. But guess what? The time is not far off. When the people of God be called upon to give their testimony before the rulers of the earth. Not one in 20 has a realization of what rapid strides we are making towards the great crisis. In our history, there is no time for vanity, for trifling, for engaging the mind in unimportant matters. She says in uh, the snares of Satan in great controversy that Satan, he loves when there's indifference in the church. That's why if, if a church don't seem to be having problems, there's something wrong because he's going to attack you when you're doing what God said do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But she said, but then soon as they start to inquire, what must we do to be saved? Then he hits the ground to stir up, to stir things up in the church, to stir things up in the home. So if things are, I'm not saying you shouldn't have easy times or smooth times at times, but trust me, if the world is your friend and it, nothing's going on and there's no disruptive nothing, you better question, am I living really for the Lord? 
kings, governors, and great men will hear of you through the reports of those who are at enmity with you and your faith and character will be misrepresented before them. But those who are falsely accused will have an opportunity to appear in the presence of their accusers mm, to answer for themselves. They will have the privilege of bringing the light before those who are called the great men of the earth. And if you have studied the Bible, if you are ready to give an answer to every man that asked you of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, your enemies will not be able to gainsay your wisdom. But you have to be filling your mind with the word daily, hourly. That's the charge, folk. That's the charge, filling your hearts and minds with God's word and spending time in that quiet hour. What Jesus did. He would... <laughs> We can spend all the time we want in church, like that saying goes, standing in the garage don't make you a car no more than standing in church make you a Christian. Amen. I go to church all the time. I'm here. Hey, I'm here prayer meeting, choir rehearsal, all that stuff. And the Lord says, I don't care. I'd rather you be doing the humblest job in the name of Jesus in me than doing 20 jobs and you, you're devoid of Christ. You now have an opportunity to attain the greatest intellectual power through the study of the word of God. But if you are indolent and lazy and fail to dig deep in the minds of truth, you will not be ready for the crisis that's soon to come upon us. Or that you would realize that each moment is golden. We cannot retrieve the hours that are lost. Every hour lost, every minute's lost is gone. If you live by every word proceeding out of the mouth of God, you will not be found un prepared mercy mercy <sighs> you know not where you may be called upon to give your witness of truth many will have to stand in the legislative courts some will have to stand before kings before the learned of the earth to answer for their faith those who have only a superficial understanding of truth will not be able to clearly expound the scriptures and give definite reasons for their faith They'll become confused and will not be workmen that need not be ashamed. Let no one imagine that he has no need to study because he doesn't preach on the sacred desk. You're not going to be able to reach for your iPhone and get your little Bible app and say, okay, let me, let me give you, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me get you a scripture real quick. You better know them scriptures in here because they're going to take them iPhones and, then, and, and, and whatever else. Present company included. 2 Corinthians 13 says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. And the sad thing about it is that a lot of people don't, when you become reprobate, you don't even know you're reprobate because wrong now seems right and right seems wrong. That's why people can get boldly on these, these channels and in these churches and preach things with such conviction. Know yourself. Know thyself. But you can't know yourself unless you're in the word. See, a lot of times we do what we say. We, we, we compare ourselves amongst ourselves. Well, I ain't as bad as them. I think it was Doug Batchelor. He said uh, a lot of times we measure ourselves based on, you know, the world. We do it ourselves. No, he said a sliding scale. Well, I'm not as bad as those in the streets. But a little bit of sin is enough to keep you out of the kingdom. There's no sliding scale in heaven. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, there's no sliding scale. Like the old folks, you sing that song, 99 and a half won't do. You must be 100. Verse 21, not every man, uh, Matthew 7, 21 to 23 says, not everyone that say to me, Lord, Lord, <sighs> going to make it in. But only he that does the will of the Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, didn't, we, I mean, we prophesied. We, we attended the prophecy classes every Saturday. We, we, we were on the, the Zoom channel. Don't, don't, don't you remember that, Jesus? I was there every day. I even taught the prophecy class. The Sunday law update. Don't you, don't you remember that, Lord? He said, mm -hmm, yeah, I remember, yeah. But I'm going to profess unto you, I never knew you. They're part from me. Ye that work iniquity. 
And that word new, that biblical word new, there's no intimacy. See, he knows you. He knows who you are. But he says, mm-mm, mm-mm, we had no intimate thing going on. So don't trick yourself. <laughs> we used to say something in the hood where I'm said, don't, 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 don't uh, wreck yourself. You know, don't, I mean, don't, don't, don't fool yourself into thinking that just because you come here every week and you have your name on the church roll, you're going to make it. The time will come when many will be deprived of the written word. But if this word is printed in the memory, no one can take it from you. Study it. Commit it. Promises to memory so that when you're deprived of your Bible, you will be in possession of God's word. We need to be, a, what, is that, what is that scripture? Is that we are to be living epistles. We're to be read and known by men, but we also need to have it. You can't be read and known by men if you ain't got something in you that comes out of you. Because what's in you is going to come out. When they see you, what do they see? Not just what we're doing. See, we're good at lip service. Oh, I, I said it to someone the other day. I said, huh, we need to have our own Academy Awards in the church because we're some of the best actors and actresses in the church. Oh, oh, we you know, praise the Lord, honey. Praise the Lord, brother. I mean, but then we go we, we, out, the, out the door. We're yelling at our husbands and talking at, back to our kids. And no, no. What's in your heart? Many do not realize what they must be. Oh, this one. I love this one. Many do not realize what they must be in order to live in the sight of the Lord without a high priest in the sanctuary through the time of trouble. Hmm. Those who receive the seal of the living God are protected in the time of trouble. Guess what? What they, what they must do? Reflect them just a little bit. Talk, you know, talk like Jesus. Just look, no, no, you must reflect his image. I don't know what you're thinking when you read that statement, but that makes me tremble. Like that song says, it causes me to tremble. To reflect the image of Jesus fully. We are so unlike our master. But every day he says, that's okay. Just keep pressing toward the mark. Keep striving. That, just, just keep trusting me and I, you, will, you will look like me soon. I like that. I didn't print out the story, but I love this story of the silversmith. I love, if you know anything about silver, when it, it isn't shiny when you first get it. It's, it's very dark and dirty and murky looking. But the silversmith, when he takes this raw silver, he has to put it in the fire. And guess what? He can't leave. He has to sit there. And watch it. If he walks away and he leaves it in too long, it'll mess it up. So he has to stay. Then he pulls it out. And he looks at it. It's not done yet. He puts it back in the fire. And he pulls it out. It ain't done yet. He puts it in the fire. And he pulls it out. And he says, ah, it's ready. Well, how does he know it's ready? Because his image is reflected in the silver. That's the only way you know silver is ready, because it's shiny and it's reflective. Mercy. So as he's preparing you to stand, don't shun the days of trials and tribulations. Oh, Lord, I pray this. No, no, no. Lord says, no, you're praying the wrong prayer. Paul, Lord, you know, remove this thorn out of my sight. He says, no, 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 Paul. My grace is sufficient. Lord, please, oh, they hurt me at the job. Oh, Lord, the spouse is getting the money. Oh, Lord, my grace is sufficient for thee. Nine times out of ten, the Lord never takes you out the trial. He just gives you grace to manage the trial. He put the Hebrew boys in that fiery furnace. He put Daniel in the lion's den. He allowed the, the children to go into Babylonian captivity because he's trying to burn something out of you. See, we're that raw silver. We're all dirty and murky and you you can't see anything in it. But he says, that's okay, daughter. That's okay, son, because I'm going to keep putting you in the crucibles, the fire, so that I can burn away the earthly dross from your character. Because guess what, folks? We ain't going like we are. Just think if he allowed us to go there just like we we are. we'd, We'd start this mess all over again. So my point is, 
He's burning out the last, the, the rem, I mean, just that, that dirtiness, the, the filthiness, the attitudes, the anger, the bitterness, all of it. But an anchor to God's people in these last days, it is our duty to ascertain the full meaning of the first, the second, and the third angel's message. And I appreciate the Sabbath school this morning because you gave a lot of context. But it says all our transactions should be in accordance with the word of God, the first Second and third angels' messages are all united and are revealed in the 14th chapter of Revelation from the sixth verse to the close. So we need to know this stuff <clears throat> for yourself. I keep repeating that for a reason. You can't just come and listen to a sermon. You need to study it for yourself. Study to do what? It didn't say, come and listen to sermons all the time, and then you're going to get it. No, you, you got to feed. Do, do you, does someone else eat your meal? And you said, boy, I am so full, and I'm so satisfied. No, you have to sit down and eat that plate of food to get the nourishment from that food. So same thing with the word of God. You must eat at the table of God. You must eat and digest his word so that you can get spiritual nourishment. So many who embrace the third angel's mess had not an experience experience in the two former messages. Satan understood this, and his evil eye was upon them to overthrow them, but the third angel was pointing them to the most holy place, and those who had an experience in the past messages were pointing them to the way to the heavenly sanctuary. Many saw the perfect chain of truth in the angel's messages and gladly received them in their order, God's God of order, and followed Jesus by faith into the heavenly sanctuary. These messages were represented to me as an anchor to the people of God. Those who understood and received them will be kept from being swept away by the many delusions of Satan. You need to know it not, and, and, and have it be a part of you. You can't just have a cursory knowledge of it. You must know it and live it. In taking a position of doubt, man calls his aid the agencies of Satan. But the only hope of one who has been educated in the line of unbelief is to fall all helpless upon the Savior and like a child submit his will and his way to Christ that he may be brought out of darkness into his marvelous light. Man does not have the power to recover himself from the snares of Satan. He who educates himself in the line of questioning, doubting, and criticizing strengthens himself in infidelity. Watch it. Watch it, folks. Watch it. And those who are listening online, watch it. Preparing for these future trials, the servants of Christ are to prepare no set speech to present when brought to the trial for their faith. Their preparation is to be made day by day, treasuring up their hearts the precious truths of God's word. In feeding upon the teaching of Christ and through prayer, strengthening their faith. Then when brought into trial, the Holy Spirit will bring to their remembrance the very truths that reach the hearts of those who shall come to hear. God will flash the knowledge obtained by diligent searching of the scriptures into their memory at the very time when it is needed. So don't worry about what am I going to do? What am I going to say? I'm going to handle it. If they come in and knock on my door, you can bring me to court. Don't worry about it. What you've been doing prior to that. One of the things I really wanted to point out in this, because you, I know we hear a lot of stuff here at State Line, a lot of powerful messages, but I want to make sure that what are you doing to be prepared for the Sunday law? This is the stuff to prepare for the Sunday law, making sure your heart is fixed, making sure you're in the word. A lot. So that you will be able to say, oh, Holy Ghost, okay, thank you. And the scriptures just flow out of you. But now I hear even little children, they, 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 don't, know, they don't know Jesus, but they can quote um, something, a, a rapper on, on Facebook. I mean, there was a little kid, they had somebody on Facebook, and they had this little kid, two years old, and he could do, do a whole rap. I'm like, wow. So if they can learn that, they can learn the scriptures. Some of us can quote the latest sports, sports stats and all these things, and we can quote that off the top of our head, but can't quote a scripture to save our lives. Lord have mercy. 
When the time of trial shall come, there are men now preaching to others who will find, hmm, upon examining the positions they hold, that there are many things for which they can give no satisfactory reason. Until then tested, they knew not their great ignorance. Are you reading that? You can be in the church for 20, 30, 40 years and just kind of skating by and kind of riding on the coattails of your pastor and your family and your legacy and your, your, your heritage. But yet when you're brought before somebody and the pastor ain't there to pull out his Bible, you're like, uh, uh, I, I don't know why I go to church. I don't know why I'm, I go to state line. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can't give you a reason. I just been here all my life. And there are many in the church who take it for granted that they understand what they believe, but until controversy arises, they do not know their own weakness. When separated from those of like faith and compelled to stand singly and alone to explain their belief, they will be surprised to see how confused are their ideas, what they accepted as truth. Saints, Lord have mercy. That statement right there is, 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 is shuddering. It makes you just... Sometimes I feel like the disciples at that table when, they, when Jesus said, someone's going to betray me. I'm like, is it I? Is it I? I'm, I'm like, look, because see, I, I used to be kind of like really secure, like I said, in the church. But now I'm like, but these statements are like, you may be the very one to turn somebody in. It says, unless these many are going to become offended. You know, I used to think that meant everybody out there. But you know, some of the most people are going to be offended are those right in the house. How dare you preach? I mean, there are some of our pastors who are banned from preaching in certain churches because they're preaching present truth, the mark of the beast and all these things. And they are no they're banned from conferences. So there's a lot of people being offended within the house. We as a people have not accomplished the work which God has committed to us. We are not ready for the issue to which the enforcement of the Sunday law will bring us. It is our duty as we see the signs of approaching peril to arouse to action. Let none sit in calm expectation of the evil, comforting ourselves with the belief that this work must go on, you know, because prophecy foretold it and the Lord will just shelter us. We are not doing the will of God when we sit in quietude, doing nothing to preserve liberty of conscience. Fervent, effectual prayer should be ascending to heaven that this calamity may be deferred until we can accomplish the work which has so long been neglected. Let there be no most earnest prayer and let us work. Listen to that word. Let us work in harmony with our prayers. So you can't pray it. And then not be, your life is not in harmony with your praying. Amen. We wonder why our, our person is bouncing off the ceiling. Because the Lord says, but you're not living what you're praying about. The ability to give a reason for our faith is a good accomplishment. But if truth does not go deeper than this, the soul will never be saved. The heart must be purified from all moral defilement. That's why I told you I've been doing some serious praying lately. I say, Lord, what idols in my life, I, I know they're there. Take it. Because if you don't take it, Jesus, I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to cherish it. I'm going to keep it close by. Few realize that it is the duty to exercise control over their thoughts and imagination. That's what you were talking about earlier in that nugget there. It's difficult to keep the undisciplined mind fixed upon profitable subjects. But if the thoughts are not properly employed, religion cannot flourish in the soul. The mind must be preoccupied with sacred and eternal things, or it will cherish trifling and superficial thoughts. Both the intellectual and the moral powers must be disciplined, and they will strengthen and improve by exercise. Mm. Yeah, these are some sobering statements, folks. I mean, it's quiet in the house, but it, this, this is sobering stuff. We greatly need to encourage and cultivate pure, chaste thoughts and to strengthen the moral powers rather than the lower and carnal powers. God help us to awake from our self-indulgent appetites. Oh, I ain't got no appetites. I, I ain't self-indulgent. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, I'm a, a medical missionary and I, I'm temperate. Sometimes we could be so intemperate even some of our attitudes about temperance. 
I know that sounds kind of contradictory, but I've listened to some people like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I mean, they go off on a tangent off to the left. I'm like, okay, and I'm not going to get deep into that, but we need to cultivate these thoughts and, and self-indulgent. Mm. But look how Enoch, Enoch, he walked with God 300 years. How did he do it before being translated? It says here that his situation, his, it was no more favorable than ours. But he educated his mind and heart to ever feel that he was in the presence of God. And in perplexity, his prayers would ascend to him to get help. So that's the, that, okay, if you, if you got lost there, that right there is how he did it. He educated his mind and heart to ever feel that he was in the presence of God. Mercy, 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 mercy. He refused to take any course that would offend his God. We become so accustomed to sin. I'm talking about even us in the church. There was a time, see, I'm not that at all, but I'm old enough. I'm, 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 I'm in that where we used to watch TV and there used to be stuff that, you know, that wouldn't, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, you just see the, what the, somebody just got shot on TV. Uh, now we just be click, click, click. We just clicking through blood flying out. We just, we watch stuff on TV and we could, people dying. We just, it just, it just don't affect us. And that's the enemy's job to anesthetize and desensitize God's people so that we won't even see sin as sin. Job says, I eschewed evil. Do we eschew evil? Do we shun it? Do we hate it? I said, one time I said, Lord, help me to throw up in the presence of sin. Let, me, let it be so nasty to even see it, think it, want to watch it, whatever it is that it makes me want to throw up. Because I, I love sin. Yeah, I said I love sin. And everybody in this room does too. Yes. We just on different levels, different degrees of it, but we all love sin because you're born in sin, you're shaping in iniquity. Now Enoch was a representative of those who will be upon the earth when Christ shall come, who will be translated to heaven without seeing death. So if you're going to be a part of this 144,000, these different things I'm showing you, recognizes Christ's presence is ever before you, being in the word constantly, in prayer, these are the tools that God has given this church. Enoch had temptations. He was surrounded with society, no friendly to ours. The atmosphere he breathed was tainted with sin and corruption, the same as ours, yet he lived a life of holiness. He was unsullied with the prevailing sins of the age in which he lived, so we may remain pure and uncorrupted. Oh, Lord have mercy. Wow. In reviewing our past history, these are God's past blessings. Having traveled over every step of step advanced to our present standing, I can say, praise God. As I see what the Lord has wrought, I am filled with astonishment and with confidence in Christ as the leader. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching us in our past history. How's he been leading you? Never forget. Never forget. It's a time to reflect on this, people. If there was ever was a time when serious reflection becomes everyone who fears God, it is now. When personal piety is essential. The inquiry should be, what am I and what is my work and mission at this time? On which side am I working, Christ or the enemies? Let every soul now humble himself or herself before God, for now we are surely living in the great day of atonement. What is your work? What must you do to be saved? Lord, that, I mean, that's what should be your question. Lord, here are my, I just lay myself bare before you, Lord. Here, use my hands. That song we used to sing as kids, I give you my hands to reach out to man. I'm available to you. Are you available? Or are you just coming to church? The case is even now of many are passing and before, review before God, for they are to sleep in their graves a little season. Your profession of faith is not your guarantee in that day. 
but the state of your affections. Is the soul temple cleansed or is it defiled? Are my sins confessed and am I repenting of them before God that they may be blotted out? Do I esteem myself too lightly? Am I willing to make any and every sacrifice for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ? Do I feel every moment I am not my own, but Christ's property, that my service belongs to him? Whose am I? We should ask ourselves, for what am I living and working, and what will be the outcome of it all? These are the solemn questions we need to be asking every single day. What am I doing? Why am I here? What, are, what is the purpose of me being on this job? Well, what am I here at church? Who am I supposed to be serving? How do I use my tools and these gifts to honor the master? James 4 says, you adulterers, don't you realize your friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Five, what do you think the scriptures mean when they say that the spirit of God has placed within us filled with envy, but he gives us even more grace to stand against such evil desires? As the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but favors the humble. But that part there, he says, he will give you grace upon grace upon grace yes. to stand against the, the, such these evil desires. Oh, I can't help it. I just can't help it. I'm just going, I just, I love doing this. I love eating that. I love watching this. But then you're already setting yourself up for failure because the, what did I say in the very beginning? Get your eye off of self. Yes. One of my favorite hymns, I don't hear it in most of our churches, but turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. If you're turning your eyes upon him, because what light and darkness can't coexist. It can't coexist. So the more you stare at the light, you're going to hate darkness. We're, we're coming to a close here soon. So humble yourself before God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Come close to God. And God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. Ask yourself, what are we living and working, and what will be the outcome of it all? I think I read that one, but just think about that. Mercy, 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 mercy. There's earnest warfare before all who would subdue that evil tendencies that strive for the mastery. The work of preparation is an individual work. We're not saving groups, people. State line, I love it here. You ain't saved by state line. You're not saved by sister so-and-so, by, by your mama. It, mm -mm. <laughs> The purity and devotion of one will not offset the one of these qualities in another. Though all nations are to pass in judgment before God, yet he will examine the case of each individual with as close and searching scrutiny as if there were not another being upon the earth. Everybody's got to be tested and found without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Whew. Okay, we're wrapping up. The judgment is now passing in the sanctuary. For many years, this work has been in progress. Soon, not know how soon, it will pass to the cases of the living. In the awful presence of God, our lives are to come up in review. At this time, above all others, it behooves every soul to heed the Savior's admonition. Watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. Mark 13, 33. He's going to come on us as a thief, he says. If, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I'll come on as a thief, and thou shalt not know the hour which I come upon thee. A lot of us become, you know, prophecy. We're newspaper watch. We're always looking at the you know, newspaper prophets. So, oh, this happened, this happened. Yes, we should be watching. Don't, I'm, don't get me wrong. But you don't know the day, because I've heard so many prophecies over the past few years from different preachers. He coming next year. He coming in 2022. He coming in 2021. He coming to... And then, then, you know what, that, the enemy does that to get us like, oh, well, he didn't come in 2019, he didn't come in 20, and then we start to get lax. No, just know he coming. Right. 
Don't worry about the day nor the hour. And guess what, folks? Thank the Lord he ain't come because we ain't ready. See, in his mercy, he's deferring time so that he gives us time to work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. So stop watching and, oh, oh he's coming. Oh, two and two, oh, oh, I hear 2023 is going to be it. And cash the society starting in July. All these different things. Yeah, those are things letting know that the birth pains are just getting, they're getting more. The birth pains are more. But we don't know the day. It could be five years from now. It could be next year. It could be six months. It, we don't know. But just make sure you're calling an election is sure. Make sure you're studying the word. Eat it. Digest it. Devour it. Say, Lord... I, I don't enjoy reading the Bible so much, but you say, Lord, but Lord, make me willing to be willing. You read that scripture? Make, Lord, make me willing to do it. Matthew 24, 21 says, For then there will be a great tribulation such as not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. And if those days had not, here it is, been cut short, no human being would be saved, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. He's going to cut it short in righteousness when the time comes. But just make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready. All right, I'm, I'm wrapping it up here. If you find no pleasure now in the contemplation of heavenly things, if we have no interest in seeking the knowledge of God, no delight in beholding the character of Christ, if holiness has no attraction for us, then we may be sure that our hope of heaven is vain. Perfect conformity to the will of God is thy high aim to be constantly before the Christian. He will love to talk of Jesus and God and the home of bliss and purity before Christ has prepared for them that love him. The contemplation of these themes when the soul feasts upon the blessed assurances of God, the apostle represents as tasting the powers of the world to come. Is it... Is it at the tip of your tongue? It's like you just can't wait to, like, okay, when it was kids, show and tell. We used to like to show and tell as kids. Do you want to show and tell about Jesus? Because first you got to show it. Then you want to tell it. But sometimes we, we can't wait to show and tell about the latest gossip or the latest sports scores or the latest what's going on in the pop culture or what I saw on Facebook and YouTube. And I'm not down in any of these, these platforms. I'm just saying what is most important to you, Christ and him crucified or what's going on in the world? My final statement here, if you are right with God today, you are ready if Christ should come today. Are you right with him now? Are you living for him the best you know how now? Are you asking and, and standing between the porch and the altar and say, Lord, help me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Wash me and make me clean. Because no sin can be on the books. None. You need to begin on your knees and say, Lord, okay, start bringing that stuff back to my mind. Lord, what, what did I have to confess? What do I need to be right with my brother, with my sister? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I need to get right with? Every moment you need to be praying. Because if, he says, if you're right with him today, you'll be ready. But the opposite, if you're not right now, he could come. Your, your probation could close as soon as you walk out that door and you get hit by a car. Lord have mercy. God forbid. I remember a, uh, uh, a young man in my church. He would be my age now. Um, he had kind of strayed from the church. I mean, he was a pro, pro athlete. I mean, he was like just good looking man. Um, but he just got out there in the streets. One Sabbath, he came back to church and stood up and gave his life back to the Lord. That night, he went out with some buddies driving, and it was wintertime where I'm from, slid, hit an uh, embankment, and all of them were killed instantaneously. If that young man had not given his life to Christ, that would have been his probation. Are we ready for Jesus to come? Are we ready? Are we faithful in all that we do? Are we ready? I'm going to make an appeal. I don't know anybody in this room in your personal walk with Jesus. I don't know where you are. Everybody's on their own walk with Jesus. If you want to say, Lord, 
I have not been all I should be. I got some things in my life that I know I need to clean up. If you want to make your stand and say, Lord, I'm ready to take that stand, please come forward to recommit yourself to the Lord. Now, there may be some who have never committed their life to Christ ever. You may have stumbled in here and said, I don't know why I came here, or I just came here, you know, or maybe you've been contemplating and said, I want to give my life to Christ and be baptized. If we have someone here who wants to be baptized for the first time and said, I'm ready to make that stand because I want to be able to stand in that great and terrible day. If, you don't, if you're not serious about it, don't come. But only those who are serious and say, I want to make my calling and election sure. Help us, Jesus. We'll hold for a few more seconds. Those who, and those who want to just stand, that's fine. We'll just stand in your place. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to stand before you. I pray over each and every one of these dear souls, Lord, who have come to recommit their lives to you, and maybe some who may say, I want to be baptized. You know each and every case that stands before us, Lord. Speaking, even though I'm standing here at the pulpit, Lord, my, I'm, I'm down there too, because I know that I'm not where I ought to be. I am not too ashamed. I am not pious. I am not ready if you came tonight. But every day I strive for the mastery. I'm asking you to remove idols out of my life. So I pray over every dear brother and sister, a woman, boy, girl, just all of us. Because we don't want to be lost. We don't want to come here in vain, listen to all these wonderful messages and the, 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 the prophecy report and telling people about the Lord. But yet we're going to be found wanting on that day. So, Lord, help us, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you. And be with the pastor and his wife as they're out in the field serving in another church right now, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you. And we help, ask that you would help us to make sure this day is consecrated to you, Father, and that we honor it and not let any unsanctified words come out of our mouths. And, but help us to delight in this day. And, Encourage one another to the faith and build each other up and because Lord we need it We need it. this world is, 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 is Attacking us from all sides and we need each other to bear each other's burdens And if there's any amongst us who are sick, I pray for them father God whether it be sick emotionally sick physically bring healing upon them father and if those who have just lost loved ones touch their lives, Father, let that healing balm that comes through touch them and bring that healing. And if anybody is here in need of a job or whatever it may be, you said you own the cattle upon a thousand hills. We are all in need of something, Lord, and you are the great giver. You're the great physician. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for just giving us everything we need. You said you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. So we, and Lord, please remove any sin from, our, from me, especially, that would hinder this prayer. We thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray for your name's sake. All stand. All stand for the closing hymn. And the hymn is 507. 507.
Were your souls watered, saints? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you ready to see our Lord and Savior in peace? I hope this message does not go on deaf ears. May we apply it to this life and share this bread with others in a world of darkness. Can we do that, saints? He's coming sooner than we think. Benediction is taken from 1 Thessalonians 3, 12 to 13. And the Bible says, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your heart unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Let us have a moment of silent meditation as we ponder on this message. You may be seated. <laughs> 